Super Smash Bros. Ultimate was by all accounts a once-in-a-lifetime kind of game bringing together nearly 100 different characters from just as many different games, something that according to director Sakurai is unlikely to ever happen again. In response to this, the community has started discussing and making videos trying to figure out who would or should get cut in a hypothetical Smash 6. A popular trend is taking this to the extreme where they ask, what if we had to cut the entire roster in half? What is the best way to do that, and how do you make a Thanos roster suck as little as possible? Well, I have a different idea. What is the worst way to cut the roster in half? How do you make the most people upset and create a roster that makes the least amount of sense? What lengths do you go to to create the lamest, weirdest, most bizarro Smash roster? You may think that it's something as simple as just finding the best people to keep and doing the opposite of that, but there's actually a lot of fun nuance you can do with this concept. There are 89 different fighters, which means we have to cut this list down to 44 and a half. And yes, if you stick around, you'll see how I cut half of a single fighter. Stick around after that, and I have an extra fun little bonus at the end of the video too, as a cherry on top of this concept. Okay, with the intro out of the way, let's get started. Let's look at what everyone calls the OG-12. These titans have all been here since day one in Smash 64 and are the only ones with a true perfect attendance record that have been here for every single title. If we were making a good roster, all 12 of them would stay because their legacy within Smash is too great to ever lose. But we're making the worst roster, so all of them are gone, right? No. We're keeping Ness and Jigglypuff. I know it's hard to lose, But it's okay guys, we still have and one of the two pink balloons. We didn't need two of them anyway. Besides, who even likes Kirby and all of his cute hats anyway? First up to the plate today, we have Princess Peach. Debuting in Smash Melee, she's honestly up there with the original 12 fighters as far as recognizability and legacy is concerned. She is the quintessential video game princess, and she's a really cool character in Smash itself with her insane combos. There is no universe where she gets to stay. Next up, we have Daisy. Peach is more outgoing and sporty fellow princess with the exact same moveset. You know, she isn't as well known and has next to no legacy. I mean, does anyone even really care about her at all? I could keep her, but I won't. We're setting out to upset people, and Peach Mains could just play her instead. You guys want to know who one of the most single cuttable characters for this project is? Yeah, it's Bowser. I mean, what isn't there to love about this guy? It's Bowser! He's Mr. Video Game Villain himself, he's fun as hell to play and watch, and he's the poster child of heavyweights. Bowser rules. He's super cut. Ice Climbers are next. And you know they've been cut before. They only have one home game. People hate fighting them. Yeah, I think we can work with this. However, they do seem difficult to program, and their game is called Ice Climber, not Ice Climbers. So we're keeping Popo, but cutting Nana. I've seen solo Popo clips, he can work by himself. And yes, that half a fighter that I mentioned, here it is right here, just Popo. Next up is Sheik. Your combo game is just too cool and you're too fun to watch. You're out. Zelda though, you typically just sit back and throw projectiles. You're not played all that often and we still don't have anyone from your home franchise who's still here. So you know what? Yeah, you get to stay. Ah, Dr. Mario. Perhaps the single most cuttable character in the game by most people's opinions. You're not very good. You're redundant. Yeah, you're still gone. It's still Mario at the end of the day and we can't let his players be too happy. The Noble Pichu. The smaller, self-damaging, glass cannon Pikachu who started as a joke character. Yeah, you get to say, yes, I know I just cut the worst Mario, but this list is meant to confuse and upset people. Falco. The guy who is neither the main character nor the cool rival villain character. Always been second fiddle to Fox, even within Smash Brothers itself. Well, you got the whole franchise on your back now. No pressure. You're staying in. Marth is next. The face of what started as a small franchise that only released in Japan who has an impressive legacy both in Smash as well as trailblazing everything you have done with your Fire Emblem to make it the juggernaut that it is today. We don't have any sorties yet, so you know what? Yeah, you get to stay, Marth. Lucina, you're staying in too. You're an Echo, you'll be easy to develop, and some may consider you a waste of space, so get cozy because you're still in. Quite an entrance. What's your name? Young Link, the smaller, significantly more annoying Link that everyone hates fighting. Come on in, little guy. Oh, Ganondorf. Yeah. 
dude, your swag is just too strong. You don't fit in. Sorry, you gotta go. Mewtwo. You're too iconic of a Pokemon, and somehow you aren't that annoying to fight. Yeah, you're cut. Roy. Your home game never released outside of Japan, and you're one of the most cuttable characters despite how much I love you. You are absolutely staying in. Hey guys, it's my video. I still want to be able to play as someone I actually like playing as, so let me have this. Krom, you're my favorite character from Fire Emblem, and you're someone who's constantly on everyone's chopping block, but I love you too. You got your chance another day, and you're getting one again. Come on in, buddy. Mr. Game & Watch, in recent memory, you have skyrocketed to the council of most annoying characters to fight that everyone just hates. Yeah, you're still in. Meta Knight, however, you're just way too cool to watch, and your Smash legacy is too big. It's time to retire. Pit and Dark Pit. You guys have always been a welcomed addition who people seem to have no issues with. You're straightforward, you're honest, you're easy to understand fighters, but honest and straightforward just doesn't have a place on this roster, so you guys are gone. Metroid fans, you guys deserve a win. I cut Samus earlier, and Metroid deserves a representative, so you can have Zero Suit Samus. Now, Wario was another character I knew instantly would be someone who was getting cut. Everything about him is just too beloved and iconic. His moveset is so expressive and funny, he's fun to play as and against. He's just a funny guy who's an absolute blast to have around, and for that reason, he's getting cut. You know, when I first wrote the script for this video, I actually somehow completely forgot about Snake. He somehow tactical espionage action rolled his way out of sight and nearly managed to sneak onto my final roster. Luckily, however, my editor is smarter than I am and apprehended him. Truth be told, there is a way I could jink my way into keeping him here. I don't want to cut out whole franchises if I can avoid it. He's an obnoxious zoner trapper character who a lot of people really hate fighting, but none of that matters. He was the very first third party fighter in the series and the pure unfiltered joy he brought people when he appeared in that initial everyone is here trailer is not something that's just gonna fly here. Plus he's been cut before anyway so he's used to it. Ike. You started off Smash Ultimate's life cycle with an explosive amount of momentum but seem to have aggressively fallen by the wayside with your very straightforward game plan. Some that people may even call lame. Well get your nair arm ready cause you get to keep on trucking dude. Pokemon Trainer. You are no stranger to losing two-thirds of your characters when you cut Squirtle and Ivysaur in Smash 4 just keeping Charizard. So we're going to do that again, but instead of the fast rushdown and the meaty heavy, we're keeping only Ivysaur, the annoying little zoner character. You know what would be funny? If we kept Diddy Kong without Donkey Kong. That, yeah, you staying, it's just, that's neat. Lucas is possibly the single most obscure character on the roster whose game is illegal to play outside of Japan. So he's definitely staying in, because we need two characters who can spam PK FIRE! Smash still needs third-party fighters as part of its identity, and Sonic is up there with Game & Watch as one of the most annoying people to fight. So Sonic, yeah, you're in for sure. DDD, in a normal world, it would make no sense whatsoever to keep you over Kirby and Meta Knight. So absolutely, you get to stay. Also, we do need some heavyweights. You seem to be cutting a lot, so you get to stay. Also, I'm keeping Alf, but not Olimar. No further comments. Lucario staying in while Pikachu, Charizard, and Mewtwo are cut is exactly the type of energy this Bizarro roster needs. So let's keep Lucario. Rob is staying in. I, don't know, I think he's funny. That's really all there is. Toon Link also gets to stay because he would be wasting a slot alongside Young Link. Also, Toon Link has always been such an annoying little brother-ass character, and we need that kind of energy here. Wolf is the main antagonist of Star Fox and one of the most widely loved characters in the game. Yeah, no chance he's staying. He's gone. Bilger is the face of Animal Crossing, and any normal list has next to no chance of actually getting cut, so yeah, we're cutting him here. The guy who started the modern era of fighter reveal trailers, one of the most natural and well-fitting third parties we have. Yeah, no way you get to stay. We Fit Trainer is definitely in though. One of the weirdest characters in the first place with one of the smallest player bases. Get cozy, we fit things. Rosalina and Luma. Oh yeah, a two-for-one fighter. Adds more Mario characters. Nobody plays you except to buzz because of your weird mechanics, so it's easy to keep you. And, well, we did cut Nana earlier, so let's keep you guys. Little Mac. Truth be told, I nearly cut you, but I'm keeping you because I don't like cutting out whole franchises more than I have to, and you're like the second worst character, but still somehow annoying to fight at the same time. So you get to stay in, but barely. Punch Out as a franchise, being on life support certainly helps, to be honest. Greninja. 
You're one of the coolest and most popular Pokemon to exist, and a pretty cool character in Smash 2. Don't let the door hit you on the way out. You're cut. Next up we have the Miis. This was actually pretty simple. Brawler has one of the cleanest movesets, and Gunner has so many iconic Mii costumes, so they're gone. Swordfighter though, your moveset is awkward and clunky, your Mii skins are fine. No Sans or Cuphead or Bomberman or anything, so yeah, Swordfighter gets to stay. Ever since we cut every version of Mario, we didn't have a simple, easy to learn character, so who better to take up the mantle of Mr. Video Games himself than Palutena from Kid Icarus, so Palutena gets to stay. When I first made this list, I made a rule that characters with strong legacies inside or outside of Smash are the most likely to get cut, unless they have a really goddamn annoying moveset, and nobody exemplifies this better than Pac-Man. I swear, Zoner Trapper characters are my goddamn kryptonite, so Pac-Man absolutely stays. Speaking of Zoner Trappers, we have Robin, the face of the very successful Fire Emblem Awakening and the first character to break out of the basic swordy archetype that every other Fire Emblem character is. You would think I would cut him, but no, Zoner Trappers are the worst, so he gets to stay. Shulk is the face of the now super popular Xenoblade Chronicles and has one of the coolest mechanics in the video game with his Monado arts. Yeah, easy cut, despite having a legendary taunt to spam. I'm really, 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 really feeling, it. feeling it! I cut, like, every other Mario character, so Bowser Jr., you get to stay, but Wendy's the new default Koopaling. When I first set out to figure out the worst roster of characters to keep, Duck Hunt was literally the first character I thought of who gets to stay no matter what. Obscure? Check. Unpopular? Check. Annoying? Check. It's the perfect character. You absolutely get to stay. Next is Ryu. The face of fighting games and his inclusion in Smash was a really big deal. Some even call him Mr. Crossover because of how generous Capcom is with using him and stuff. So yeah, super easy cut here. Ken, on the other hand, gets to stay. His moveset is just different enough from Ryu's to be irritating to all the Ryu mains who want to keep fighting. Cloud was a huge deal when he came out and he's become the face of Square Enix as a company, as well as the RPG genre as a whole. FF7 as a brand is doing better than ever, so yeah, no way is he staying. Moving on. Oh, Corin. You get bullied so much by the Smash community, despite the fact that in-game you're actually pretty cool. Simply because your entire existence in this game was nothing more than a basic marketing ploy for your game is why people hate you. But you, you know what, you get to stay. Don't let the millions of haters get to you. Bayonetta. For the longest time, you were public enemy number one in the Smash community. Your infamy is up there with the likes of Meta Knight's absolute dominance back in the Brawl days. This feels different somehow, but I feel people look weirdly more fondly back on Meta Knight than they did with you, so based purely on vibes, I'm gonna keep you around even though I cut him. Inkling is the face of Splatoon, and Splatoon is Nintendo's biggest IP of the past decade. No, no way are you staying in. Ridley, dude, you're just too big. I don't know how we can keep you, I don't, it just makes no sense. Simon Belmont, you're one of the most natural fits for Smash Brothers that we've ever had, and you were super requested for a long time, so yeah, you gotta go. That being said, this moveset is incredibly annoying to deal with, so let's keep Richter for good measure, kind of get a worst of both worlds kind of thing. Metroid fans, what do you want from me? You still have a Samus, you don't need a second Hot Topic variant. Go play Wii Fit Trainer if you want to use a charge shot. K. Rule, you got too much Riz, dude. Even though your moveset drives me insane, I think people still really like you. You're also the main villain of a main Nintendo franchise, so yeah, you're out. Isabelle has become the mascot for Animal Crossing, and I know I cut K. Rule for being popular despite his annoying moveset. I'm gonna do the opposite for Isabelle, however. Her moveset is so annoying that it's keeping her in. Incineroar. Maybe it's because I'm biased and hate fighting you more than literally any single character in the entire game, but I can't stand the idea of keeping you even in a toxic roster. Yeah, I'm cutting you too. I admit, this one's personal. Piranha Plant. You killed the dreams of so many Geno fans with your reveal trailer, and that was so goddamn funny. So you get to stay. Maybe people will actually play you now. Joker was such a cool way to kick off the first fighter pass. He was one of, if not the most well-represented DLC fighter, who has become one of the most well-loved and fun fighters to both play as and watch. Super easy cut here. Hero, on the other hand, your playstyle is obnoxious and zony, your RNG is pointless and stupid, you're from a franchise that nobody outside of Japan actually cares about. Yeah, you get to stay. Square Enix deserves to keep somebody after all. Up next is Banjo and Kazooie. 
And, you know, by the time Smash Ultimate was in full swing, it was getting more and more rare for characters who joined the roster to feel like they were coming home and that they should have already been there the whole time, as opposed to being an exciting new addition that shakes things up. Nobody represented that feeling more than them. Banjo and Kazooie being in just feels natural, which is exactly why I'm cutting them. Harry, you're just too cool, dude. You and your 50 dope-ass music tracks are out of here. Now, if you didn't notice it before, I'm about to make it glaringly obvious. The biggest complaint people have about the Smash Ultimate roster is that there's too many Fire Emblem characters in it. And I have BS'd so many reasons so far for all of them to have stayed. But that was all a lie. The only reason every single Fire Emblem character has stayed so far is because I thought it would be funny if I kept every single Fire Emblem character on this roster. So for this reason, and this reason alone, Byleth gets to stay. Now on to Fighter Pass 2, we have Min Min. You're incredibly annoying to fight, you don't play like a Smash character, you're not even the coolest ARMS character since Twin Tell or Max Brass would have been cooler, and ARMS isn't even a big deal to begin with. Yeah, you're still in. Ah, Steve. Taken over Bayonetta's place as the single most hated character in Smash, you're grossly overpowered, incredibly lame to play, watch, and spectate, you're a complicated program, Sakurai didn't even want you but was forced to include you, oh yeah, you're definitely still in, even though you wouldn't realistically be cut anyway. Sephiroth, you are one of the coolest fighters and one of the most iconic villains in all of gaming. You had the sickest reveal trailer and you are just way too cool to keep in this loser ass roster. Pyra and Mithra. You are another set of characters that people are upset with, mostly because you were released in a comically over two state. Your moveset isn't too bad thematically, it's just way too juiced up. However, we cut Shulk earlier, so keeping you in as the Xenoblade rep would be funny, so you guys are staying. And now we have Kazuya Mishima, another of the most hated characters nowadays, almost up there with Steven Sonic for how disgustingly powerful you are. Yeah, you're staying. Lastly, we have my boy Sora. My personal main in Smash, my favorite fictional character from my favorite video game franchise, so maybe I'm biased here, but Sora, you are the single most requested character ever. You're the face of a hugely popular third party franchise, and quite possibly the single most oh my god they actually did it character that we've ever had. Yeah, no shot are you staying in. You deserve way better than this hell I've created. Well. That just about wraps it up. That's all the fighters in the whole franchise. Hold it! Before we finish up, we are talking about a new hypothetical Smash game after all. And what would a new Smash game be without newcomers? So I cooked up a toxic yet plausible fighters pass to go alongside our new roster. I want to pick some characters that would be upsetting yet absolutely believable for roster additions. First up, we have Jonesy Fortnite. You know what we needed? Another annoying character from a massively popular game that can literally build structures just like Steve, but with a gun this time. Next up, we have another fighter from an insanely popular game that most people want nowhere near Smash Brothers, and that's specifically the male traveler from Genshin Impact. Smash fans hate anime sword fighters, and Genshin fans like literally every other character in the game more than male traveler, and no, the significantly more popular female Traveler will not be an alt either. One of the funniest things in the Smash Ultimate roster speculation days was when Jeff Kaplan, the director of Overwatch, at the height of Overwatch's popularity, made a statement that Sakurai and the Smash Brothers team could have any Overwatch character they wanted in Smash, and Sakurai just left him on red. Now, Overwatch 2 is a shell of its former self and just a money-grabbing husk. So let's pick Sombra as our next DLC fighter. She isn't the main character, but imagine how annoying it would be if a stealth character removed your ability to use special moves. Moving on, now, it wouldn't be a Smash game without the obligatory new promotional Fire Emblem character. So yeah, Aaliyah from Fire Emblem Engage is absolutely getting in because we clearly need more Fire Emblem characters. Now, before we get to the final awful character for this evil, twisted roster, I gotta do the YouTube thing and ask that you like and comment on this video if you enjoyed it, as it really helps us creators in getting eyes on our content. I have a lot of other videos similar to this one in the pipeline, so if you want to see when I release those too, make sure you subscribe with notifications. Thank you. Now, for our final character. It's gotta be someone that really stands out. It took me a while to decide, but then it hit me. Yasuo from League of Legends. Riot pushes him in everything they do, and he's the face of these sweaty, toxic tryhards that everyone hates. 
and I think he's exactly who Riot would push for Smash if given the opportunity. And so here it is. That's that. Here's the final Thanos roster. Making the worst possible roster was definitely an interesting challenge because it required a completely different way of thinking than it would take to try and make roster cuts suck as little as possible. All in all though, I'm really proud of just how absolutely nonsensical and downright infuriating this roster is. But I want to hear what you think. Should I have cut Duck Hunt and kept Captain Falcon? Obviously not, but I'd love to hear your thoughts regardless. Also, if you love Super Smash Brothers related content, I stream over on my Twitch channel multiple times a week. I'm currently completing every single Smash Fighters most iconic game from their home franchise, from Super Mario 64 for Mario, all the way through to Kingdom Hearts 1 for Sora. Thank you for watching, have a great night.